Welcome to The Social Stack, your go-to channel for marketing tips based in technology for your real estate business. I'm Amy Stack, and today during Master Your Marketing, we'll be talking about how uh, you can use technology to help advertise your events and get more people and more information about uh, those folks that are signing up for your client events. Now, because I want this to be as beneficial for all of you that are here as possible, I would like to hear um, some of the things that you're interested in learning about today. There's a few different directions we can go and I can touch a little bit on everything or we can dig deep into a specific topic. Um, I get a lot of questions about just like, how do I send an invite out? What should I use? What kind of information should I be asking for? Um, so we can talk about invitation systems. We can talk about things like flyers and graphics and social media and putting it out into the world. Um, and we can even talk about things like what types of questions should I be asking in a registration process? So go ahead and either unmute or put in the chat. Are you wanting to learn everything? Do you want to learn specifically about invitation system? Do you want to learn specifically about social media? What do you guys think? You're here, so I want to cater this to your, your needs. Okay, so our, our question, we love throwing client events. We have done several, obviously we get a few more people each time because they're getting used to the invite. I use Evite for the most of it because okay. I, I feel like I can see who's opened and I follow. But how do I, I guess for us, Gina and I, we just wanna know, like we're gonna do a theater, a, a movie event. How do we reach the masses? How do we reach more people better, more effectively um, and get that, I know it's the touch, but I want more people to attend as well. So I, we're pretty, like we do it, but we're not great at it. Like we just have fun and hope for the best. So for this movie theater event, are you thinking you're not just inviting clients, you're gonna open it up to the public and hopefully get more people in? Not necessarily, we, we're gonna open up to our whole database. Yeah. So it's kind of the public, but not. So, you know, <laughs> typically on other events, it's it's a smaller, we can only allow 50 or we can only allow 30 or whatever that is. And so I invite double and we get an okay turnout, but, you know, I want, I just don't know if we're reaching people effectively and the best way to do that. Okay, perfect. What else are you guys looking to get out of today? I'm okay with a little bit of everything um, since I am newer to this uh this field <laughs> so all right it's here for it all thank you i'm in the same boat okay all right then why don't we unless somebody has something else to chime in feel free i will go over a little bit of everything and if there's something we really want to dig into something i cover we'll go ahead and do that okay um so beth already mentioned she uses ebite i'm going to go ahead and share my screen because i have a few different suggestions for you depending on what you're trying to capture in the registration process of course we want to oh, i have to move my screen a little i'm sorry all right of course we want to capture who's coming right their phone number email that type of stuff uh, but there's lots of different ways to do that one of them is a simple google form so i have a couple examples of that here and i pulled up two here that are this for actually for the same event but from two different agents that made it. And I wanted to show you this because you can see they have a couple of different questions. This was a Pi Day event. So this wasn't necessarily uh, like a movie theater, right? We're having a bunch of people come. This is where around Thanksgiving, the agents were ordering pies and delivering them to their clients or having their clients do a pickup, but they needed to know ahead of time what type of pie their clients wanted. So this was the event form that a couple of my agents were using and they wanted their first name, their pie choice, this agent wanted to collect their birthday. He also asked, would you like to receive monthly updates on your local market? If yes, what email would you like those updates sent to? Do you know anyone else looking to buy, sell, invest in real estate? And if yes, to provide their contact information. Now this agent didn't say it on here. However, if they gave a referral, he gave a free can of whipped cream with their pie as well as a thank you. Then if I go over to my other agent, same type of questionnaire, of course, what type of pie, what birthday, and would you like to receive monthly updates? And that was it. So you can really build out these forms with more or less questions based on what you're really looking to learn from the people attending. So that's the nice thing about these Google Forms is that they're 100% customizable. And what I like about them is that they will put all of the answers into an Excel spreadsheet for you. 
So if you go to your responses, this was just a sample one. Let me go back to Frank's here. Um, we can hit this Excel spreadsheet and it will actually populate everything in a nice easy layout to see all the information and you can export it and upload it to command or your preferred CRM. And then it also shows you these nice little pie charts with everything too, if that's easier for you to read and understand the responses of everyone. So that's a Google form. Um, another one that I really like is Eventbrite. And the per part of the reason I like Eventbrite is that you can set up reminders to people. It will also give you a spreadsheet of all the registrants. You can require certain types of information um, as you're uh, receiving them. Um, I know we mentioned Evite. I do feel like a lot of Evites get lost in spam. That's just my personal experience. So I usually steer people more towards uh, Eventbrite or something like Sign Up Genius. So Sign Up Genius is something that if you're not familiar with it, it will actually let you have different slots. So let's say you have a time slot or a, an event that has different things going on, or maybe you're doing the same thing repeated throughout the day and you have different um, time slots to do it. Maybe you're doing your, your, uh, your movie event three nights within a month, right? So which night do they actually want to attend that movie night? You can break it up that way as well. And you can see here, I have it broken up by location on this one. This is a past class that we did, and we did the same class in multiple offices, and we just wanted a head count for lunch. So that is Sign Up Genius. And you can also get a full um, Excel spreadsheet of all the attendees from here. You can see there's a send a message from here as well, and it will track all of that analytics. It sends an auto confirmation. So does Eventbrite. So those are some different invitation systems out there. And just depending on what information you're looking to get from your clients, what uh, systems you want to be able to have in place, you can kind of choose between those, those different options. So like I said, that was specifically invite systems. Punchbowl is another really good one out there. The three that I showed you are all free. Um, they do, some of them do have upgraded versions. I believe Punchbowl is paid from the start, but it does have some really cool features, including a texting system um, that you can text right out of the platform for uh, reminders, including images as well. So what I wanted to kind of go over on that note is, let me just pull up my I have a little guide I'm going to send everybody. All right, so people ask me all the time, I know I need to advertise. Obviously, I get the question, what platform should I use for my emails and, or my invites? And that's kind of what we talked about right now. And they say, well, how many times do I reach out to people? What touches should I do? Should I be doing social, phone calls, texts, all of that stuff? So I'm going to give you guys um, a link. I'll put it in the chat at the end of the call here. Um, but if you want to take notes, I'm going to have a link that kind of gives you a little bit of an outline of a good way to start. You can always curtail it um, to meet the needs of your event. But basically, about a month out, I suggest creating that sign up link, that invitation system that we were just talking about. I do recommend that you require their address and phone number or email, because if you have their address, then you obviously know where they live. So you can farm that area. Um, if you're using command, you can put them on a monthly neighborhood nurture email. Um, and then phone and email, obviously, you want for contact. And then uh, you also, about a month out, you want to send out your save the date. So depending on the type of event, like that movie theater event, we're opening it to a large pool of people. So you just want to put that all over social media, maybe send it in a newsletter to your folks. But if it's something that's more private and you want it to be more of a VIP exclusive event, you want to send your save the date specifically to those people. Okay, so that's about a month out. And then about three weeks before, um, I do recommend using um, some sort of text app, whether you're using Twilio in command or a third party, it doesn't matter. Uh, we get a lot more conversion on texts than we do on emails. And that direct communication is really going to help. Um, so like I said, you can kind of look into different texting programs. The one in command is called Twilio. It's built right into the system. So that's nice because it tracks everything right in there for you. And it's very affordable. Then about two weeks before the event, you want to send out an email blast. The week of, you want to send out another email and or text, a reminder of everything. And then the most bang for your buck that I see um, is 
the week, like a couple days, day before, two days before your event, actually reach out to every single person that RSVP'd and say, I can't wait to see you at tomorrow's event or this week's event. And you can use a texting app to do that if you've got a larger group, but that really helps your conversion on people that show up to the event. Um, Cause you know, people sign up for stuff all the time and forget. And if it's an email, it could get lost in their email. And three days later, they're like, oh, I was supposed to go to that thing and I didn't make it, right? We don't want that to happen. So that little reminder, uh, a day or two beforehand really seems to help get more people to attend in person. Um, so the other things that we didn't touch on, that was all specifically like purposeful, direct communication. We can also do social media. So depending on your event, you're either targeting specific people or you're kind of opening it up to the world, right? And if you are opening it up to the world, you can put things in your stories, your reels, you can go on TikTok, right? That's public. So you can definitely utilize that in doing graphics or videos, but always, always, always make sure to put the registration link because it, it's no good if they don't have a way to sign up for the actual event, right? One of the things that you can do through command, I'm gonna pull up my account on the other screen really quick here for you, is you can run Facebook ads. So this is a paid ad. Go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, exactly. And there's an option to target your database. So I just hit campaigns. It's the left hand side, the little megaphone. I'm going to go to paid ads. I'm just going to hit create campaign here and we'll hit paid ads. It's that first one, social ad paid. And we're going to choose to attract events or event awareness. I'm just going to call it test. We'll call it movie. Clearly that's in my brain. And I'm going to say Facebook. You can also choose Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want to have connected. So you would make your ad just like you would make any other social media Facebook ad um, on command. But at the bottom, when you go to Facebook settings, you have the option to set up your audience. And you can hit custom audience. So it's on auto automatically. Of course, that's auto. You can hit custom audience and you can actually choose this option to target my database. So I'm going to uncheck custom audience. And then you'll see that a drop down appeared here. And you can search by tags. You can create audiences. You need at least 100 people. And I think. This will upload a custom list to Facebook. You're able to target based on a tag, neighborhoods associated, or both. There you go. So that's how you can search for that. I'm trying to think of what tags I have set up. Let's see. I'm in my account, not the demo account. I don't really use tags in here. But basically, you can pull by all the tags, or like it said, neighborhoods in your database. And um, we can just hit Create New Audience if I don't have a list created. And so right here, I can see target by tags or target by neighborhood. So let's see who's in Lombard. Okay, so I can look for all of those neighborhoods. I can add multiple ones. Can I ask you a question while you're doing this? Sure. Okay, I've tried to do this before. Mm -hmm. Do we have to have their Facebook URL tagged in their individual contact? Okay. Good question. You do not have to have their Facebook URL in there. What is extremely helpful is, let me open a new tab here. I don't want to get out of the screen. In their contact card, did you guys know you can have more than one email address? Oh, my Zoom chat just opened on my screen here. Okay, so when you're in a contact, you can have more than one email, more than one phone number, right? There's multiple things in there. Let's, I think I'm in here. We'll use Amy Chwaniak. All right, so she's got her business email in there. But when I go ahead and click this edit button, I can hit add more information, additional contact info, and I can add more information down here. So the best way to target your database and Facebook is to go into Facebook and find what email they use for Facebook and put that in here. Now, not doing that isn't gonna prevent it 
from people from seeing it. It's just a much higher percentage of getting that in front of people because it's it's targeting the specific email that they use to log into Facebook. Okay. If you guys have done Facebook ads in the past and you're using the Facebook lead capture form, it's already grabbing their Facebook emails and putting it into command for you. So if Facebook ads are part of your marketing strategy, not related to events specifically, just in general, you've got a bunch of emails already that are Facebook emails, unless they went in and changed it, which is possible. Um, so I really like to tag my Facebook ads with the fact that they came from Facebook because I'll frequently um, suggest to people that they retarget their Facebook leads because you already know that they connected with you on Facebook. So you can retarget them using this targeting system and get right back out in front of them. And you can even structure the ad to say, hey, you clicked on my ad before. Are you still interested in blah, blah, blah? So this is kind of a little deep dive, not event specific, but that's a fun little tidbit for you. Um, so to answer your question, Beth, I think that was you that asked that is, um, you do not have to have their, fa their Facebook email or URL. It does help the, your chances of getting, getting in front of them, okay? But basically the ad itself, that process is the same. My tabs are all the same color here. You just wanna create your audience and do your, your, oops, target your database and create your audience. And once you make the list the one time, it'll always be in your drop down there. So if you're doing the same people every time, you make your VIP list, it'll be there and available for you. So that's one way to get it to a specific group on Facebook versus just sharing to the world. Like if you don't really want to open it up to every single person. Um, that said, a lot of people will advertise on social media that they're having a client event and have the registration information. And sometimes you'll get people that aren't actually clients, but typically, especially with the combination of doing your emails and your text messages and your direct communication with them, typically everybody that comes is already a client. Um, you always run the risk of if you put something on social media that somebody not part of a specific group will see it and come. So just be aware of that. I keep asking questions, sorry. No, go for it, that's perfect. Okay. So along that line, if you open it up and you have a registration form and it's on Facebook, is there a way to add? I actually asked this in the chat also, but it applies to this as well. Is that Google form that you use to automatic, automatically fill out the spreadsheet? Can that be inserted into these places? Like I can insert it into my Facebook ad. I, can I insert it into Evite or is it its own thing? You can. Um, and so depending on the platform, it'll vary a little bit. If you're doing the Facebook ad, there's a couple of ways. I have the screen pulled up still. So I'm monopolizing. These are all great. These are, this is great. Fantastic questions. So thank you for asking. Um, when you're, if you're doing an ad, there is, let me close this little screen that we're on here. We want the lead settings. I always mix up these buttons. Nope, not that one. Uh, maybe it was still in Facebook. So here we go. So I always do the Facebook lead um, generation capture form right here, but it's going to ask you for a website to route them to when you do that. So you can link it to a Google form. Now, in my th experience with social media, if you are doing an ad and you're already having them fill out a form from Facebook, the algorithm, the Facebook or whatever platform you're on algorithm sees that the website that you're sending them to is just another form. And they're like, is this really a value? Am I going to push this ad up over other ones? So what I like to do is actually embed my Google form in a landing page. So the algorithm sees a website and I can put a little blurb in there and it sees more text and reads more text. So it thinks that there's higher value in there versus just another form that it's going to. Now that said, you do have the option to send to site or landing page and you could just skip the Facebook lead capture form and go directly to your Google form if you wanted to do that. Um, I only recommend doing that if you are going specifically to a lead capture form because if you're going straight to a website, there's nothing that guarantees that they're gonna give you their information, right? So that's the only time I ever use those. Um, and then you had said with Eventbrite and everything, um, can you put the Google Forms in there? And yes, with Eventbrite and the, just other platforms that are invite platforms, a lot of times there's an option to auto send an email, right, with their registration. And most of the time that's customizable. So you could put the Google Form in there already. 
it doesn't guarantee that the people are going to fill it out. They think, okay, I've already registered for this event. Why do I need to fill out this Google form as well, right? So you just kind of be prepared for that, that not everybody is going to fill out a, a secondary registration piece. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I have a quick question yeah. for you. Oh, you're um, <laughs> in the Facebook campaign, is there any way to incorporate a video into that or is it strictly just pictures and links? Well, you can do videos. Give me one second. Let me reshare here. That's under the media section. So on the add here media, we'll hit configure. And it's on images right now. There's a little bullet that says videos. And when you hit select, you can upload a neighborhood video from command. You can browse your designs library, upload your own video, or link it to something that's on hmm, YouTube, right? So that helps as well. Did that help answer that question? Oh, she's chatting with somebody. But so yeah, the answer is yes, you can absolutely put videos in there. And that's under the awesome. media. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Good question. Uh, doing videos is definitely going to get you more engagement. Um, whether that's doing a live video, put recording a video on your phone and then uploading it to your stories or putting something on YouTube and linking it. There's lots of different ways to do it. Just know that whatever platform you're on, if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, um, you wanna make the video in the platform. So like going Facebook Live or going live in stories or reels, something like that. The algorithm wants to keep people on its own platform. So if you make a video and you put it on YouTube and you link that video to Facebook, or you can't really link it to Instagram, but the algorithm is seeing that it's gonna take that person away from Facebook. So it's less likely to push it in front of people. Whereas if you do a live or put something in your story and go live or your reel, whatever you're doing, it, it sees that it's already on, the algorithm sees that that video is already on the platform that it's part of and it will push that content more so than content that's on another platform. So there's a little social media tip for you as well. Who's done some social media advertising around events? It doesn't have to be paid. You guys just posted for growing awareness. Say that again. What did you ask? Has anybody done social media um, advertising for events, yeah. whether it's paid or free? What What have you guys done? What are some of your favorite things? Is that Michelle oh, Rose? I'm sorry, we didn't really do events. I I was we we've done a lot of brand awareness through social media, but I haven't done an event yet, which is why I'm watching this. No, that's perfect. <laughs> I think I saw Lisa and Michelle said they did some. If you guys want to unmute or put something in the chat, that'd be awesome. I have nothing like super specific because I'm, again, pretty new to this. Okay. We do a lot of open houses. Um, that's kind of the majority of what we use the campaign yeah. ads for. And that's been pretty good. Okay. And that's paid ads that you do. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I see. I did a reverse bold Mother's Day event and marketed it on Facebook. Yeah. Yes, I was waiting for somebody to say that. Awesome, Nadine. <laughs> I love that one. Has anybody heard of reverse bolts? I see some nods. Okay, so for those of you that haven't, what the goal of that is, um, there's something called a bold 100 where you call 100 people in one day. You make 100 contacts. It's not just 100 phone calls. So a reverse bold, of, instead of you reaching out to 100 people, we want 100 people to call us. So using the reverse bold idea and going on social media and having some sort of prize or raffle as an incentive for people to call you is a great way to use social media for some sort of event. And you guys don't have to think of events as just the movie night or the pie day or hosting a seminar. An event can be a, a little small micro event. It can be something that's a giveaway, just like the bold, reverse bold 100. So I have a lot of agents that have done these and they will, post graphics and send emails and text messages leading up to the event, maybe not as aggressively as what I shared at the beginning of this class, but just letting people know they're gonna have this big giveaway and you have to call me between the hours of X and Y in order to be entered into the raffle for the giveaway, right? And then they put it in their stories as well. They put it on social media leading up to it. They blast it the day of the event and they send an email reminder the day of the event. And they say, I, want to hear from people I don't know too. So please share this with your friends. I want to be able to help every 
everybody. Everybody's, you know, eligible to receive this prize. And if they're doing it with a partner, an allied partner, maybe a lender, an attorney or something, they can have them advertise it as well. And you can field calls together or have everybody, uh, you know, funnel into to you as the agent. Um, so that is a great way to use social media uh, for kind of a different spin on a client event, right? So all of your clients are definitely eligible. You can remind them through your email newsletter. You can put stuff on social media that's a graphic leading up to it, like save the date, remember to call in at these times, and then the day of you want to blast it everywhere and do your videos to get that engagement as well. Thanks for saying that, Nadine. All right, guys, what did we not talk about for advertising? your event and getting ready ahead of time to get people to come to it that you want to cover. Go ahead, Beth. I just want to ask Nadine, like what kind of response, because we've, I've tried to do that type of reverse bold, or we do events. I use bomb bomb a lot to do an embedded video, like to send to my database. Cause I know they're opening it. However, I would love to do it on social media story and all that. I just don't know logistically, like how did it go? Nadine did it, was it successful? And yeah. So she said she can't jump on because there's a meeting in the office, but I'm guessing she's probably typing something right now. So okay. I'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. I'll, wait her, I'll let her wait for that. But I can tell you that a couple of people in my office have done it. Uh, and one of them is a an agent who was new to the office last year. He capped in his first year. He took bold in his first year. He's on the ALC now. He did his first bold reverse bold 100 last November, I want to say. He got 63 contacts that day. So he didn't hit the 100, but would you say 63 contacts in one day is a success? For sure. Right? So he that was his first one that he'd ever done, 63 contacts in one day. Um, I have a, a team that does one, I think, pretty much quarterly. Uh, I have a couple of teams that do them pretty regularly, actually. And, and it varies depending on uh, the prize, depending on the time of the year, you know, what, what they're giving away. Uh, but that is something they are very purposeful about kind of figuring out what it is that people might like. They'll get like a high ticket item and they'll do, one person did like full of meat, but instead of just, it was around, you know, 4th of July type of thing. Instead of just a, an igloo cooler, they went and got a Yeti, right? Something that's like a high value item and then, you know, fancy meat from a, a local uh, butcher to help promote, you know, local businesses as well. So that one went over well. And you just tweak it every every time a little bit. So the key about that is, of course, getting getting the word out ahead of time. All right, well, give me one second. I am going to get you a share link because I promised I would, oh, I got to change it to anybody can view really quick. I thought I did that, sorry. Here we go, done. All right, I'm gonna put this in the chat as a little thank you for everybody that attended. It's a link to a Google Doc that has a little bit of an outline for how to market and advertise some events starting about a month out. And then next week, same time, same place, we're going to talk about how you can follow up with people because it's great if you get people to these events or you get these people calling in for things like the reverse fold, but what, what's the point if you never follow up with them, right? You don't wanna forget about them. So what are some automations we can put in place to help with that? And I will absolutely do it live with you guys. I'll make kind of an outline as in a smart plan in command with everybody on the call and I will publish it to the library so after the call, everybody can go grab it and they can customize it for their own event. So this is definitely gonna be kind of a mastermindy one. So invite your friends that wanna do events and we'll, we'll make a follow-up plan together. Sound good? All right, I see some head nods. Well, thank you guys all for coming today. I appreciate all the great questions and the interaction. And like I said, go ahead and grab that link from the chat before we close out and you'll have a little rundown of suggestions on how to advertise is an event uh, starting a month before it happens. Thank you right. so much, Amy. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, my pleasure.